In this video, we're going to see how to create return reason codes and set up various core return options. In part two of this video, we'll look at completing the parts return process. To create return reason codes, we'll go to Setup, then click Codes and Return Options. We'll create a return reason code. I'm going to create one just for course. Creating the code is straightforward. I enter a code, then a description. The Reduce Stock option is used when creating a code for returning stocked parts to the supplier as opposed to just returning them to stock. When such a code is used, the inventory count will be reduced when the return is created. To save the code, we click Update. Enable Catalog Cores is checked by default. If you don't want to use the core functionality, you can uncheck the box and click Update. We're going to leave it checked. Let's look at Core Options. This first selection is to determine if you will leave the core charge and core return line items on the customer's printed documents. Some states require these line items to be on the document, so check with your local agency to find out what is required in your area. This is another area that varies from state to state, and it deals with how taxes are applied to the core return or credit only. If your state requires that the taxes for the core are not returned to the customer when they are accredited, you should select a non-taxable tax code from the drop-down. If the taxes for the core return are also credited back to the customer, then you would select a taxable tax code. Again, check with your local tax agency to determine the correct process. Let's work through some examples of all three of these setting choices. Remember, these settings and examples are included to cover the various laws and regulations in different states. First, we'll leave this box unchecked. When it is unchecked, the options below do not apply since the core charge is removed from the work document. Let's add a battery to an estimate. I'll choose Add Job, then Catalog Parts. Once here, I'll navigate to the battery. You'll notice the core charges are now shown in the catalog. Let's add this one to the document. Back on the estimate screen, we see the battery and the associated core charge line items. This icon indicates that it is linked to the part above. There are two ways to remove the core charge from a document. You can click this button and choose Return or Delete. You can also click the X and make your choices in this pop-up. Deleting the line item will just remove it from the document, and Return will add it to the Returns bin to allow us to track it. We want to track this core, so we'll select Return. In this box, we'll choose the reason code core we created earlier, and click Add. The core charge line item is removed from the document. This example showed returning a core, but the process would be the same for any part that you need to return to stock or a supplier. Let's go back to the Return Reason Codes page and look at the other options available. We're going to check Show Core Surcharge Credits on Documents. We're also going to leave the default tax code for core credits set to a taxable tax code. We'll click Update to save our changes. Now let's add that same battery to the estimate. I've removed the previous job for clarity. We'll return the core again, but this time we'll use this icon. We make the same choices here as earlier. The difference here is that both the core charge and core credit lines have been left on the document. Let's take a closer look at these line items. 
we see that the core charge is $18 plus tax for a total of $19.40. Since the core credit is taxable, based on the tax code we chose, the credit line is also $18 plus tax for a total credit to the customer of $19.40. The tax charged on the core is returned to the customer. These next settings are for areas where the taxes are not returned to the customer when the core is credited back. To do this, we'll select a non-taxable tax code for the credit line item. Back on the work screen, I've gone ahead and added the same battery as in the first two examples. Let's process the return and look at these numbers. In this example, we can see that the credit line is not taxed. We collected tax on the core charge for a total of $19.40, but the credit is not taxed, so only the $18 are credited to the customer and the taxes remain on the document. In this video, we saw how to create return reason codes. We also saw how to set up core options, including several, for how core credits can be configured depending on tax regulations in different areas. Using these codes and tracking part and core returns properly will not only help you stay in compliance with regulatory agencies, but will help you keep track of parts that are ready to be returned to the supplier.